In March 2007, European leaders in Brussels issued a directive to all member states to generate 20% of their energy needs from renewable sources by the year 2020. Each country has since agreed to individual targets which are legally binding. At present, only about 8.5% of the EU's energy production is from renewables, such as biomass, hydro, wind and solar power. Professor Arturas Zervas is president of the European Renewable Energy so Council. Is, uh, it's an ambitious target and it needs all the forces that are there to, uh, in order to achieve it. And the particularity of renewables with respect to the conventional uh, energy sector is exactly this, uh, that has this dimension of small scale also. It can be big scale. Scale, but it has also this dimension of small scale, of decentralized uh, energy production. So in that sense, if we want to achieve this, this target, if we, if we will be able to achieve, then we have to do it in all ways, so in the big scale and the small scale. Since the earliest days of electricity production, power has traditionally come from large-scale generators burning coal, oil and gas. More recently, nuclear reactors have become an increasingly important source of energy in some member states. Renewable energy is not so centralized. The best locations for wind and solar power generation are often in the more remote areas and offshore. Samsa Island off the coast of central Jutland in Denmark is a world-class example of decentralized renewable power. Starting in 1997, the islanders have succeeded in converting to 100% renewable power through wind, solar panels and burning farm waste, reducing their carbon dioxide output by 140% within the first 10 years. They now sell surplus power to the European electricity grid. From the start, it's been a community-owned enterprise. We've had some pretty tough discussions every now and again where people come up with their arguments saying that we don't want the farmers to own the wind turbines because we are the neighbours, we are going to look at these turbines and we have the, all the, the, the disadvantages and the farmers have the benefit of the, of the turbines. Why should we like them? They said, what, could, you, what could, could make you like them? the turbines, and then they could come up with suggestions and say, well, if we could own shares in them or if we could share the profit of the wind turbine, then it'd be something different. And I mean, then we have to confront the farmers saying that it's okay that you want to invest in the wind turbines, but you have to understand there's a community around your site that, that is going to suffer from the site and the visual impact. Maybe you should invite them and, 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 and invite them to be co-owners of the project. So, I mean, all these bits and pieces has to fit together. The principles of regional power generation and local ownership were at the heart of a 3B transnational project called ERE, which aimed to energize regional economies by treating environmentally friendly power schemes as an economic opportunity. The lead partner was the province of Friesland in northern Holland. It was a project, it was on, on, perhaps on the, on the right time project because it, it is uh, it's uh, it's a movement it's not only in a project but you see that much and more uh, energy is put on combining things combining environmental goals with uh, energy goals with economic goals and you see it ev actually everywhere uh, around uh, you see it also uh, also that was the, the idea about this project combining energy with with economy so there's also a very environmental goal in that and what the legacy is that regions uh, can do it and also know much better how to do it. Inspired by the possibilities of creating new economic opportunities through renewable energy production, the province of West Flanders, one of the transnational partners in the ERE project, has set up a pilot plant to make electricity from biogas. The gas is produced from agricultural byproducts which would otherwise have been discarded. Regional authorities play an important role uh, and as they try to raise the uh, use of renewable energy they also stimulate the green economy and we saw uh, different uh, models of that during uh, the ERE projects. Uh, looking back for instance at uh, Samso Energy, uh, Renewable Energy Island, you see that the local, uh, the local inhabitants make uh, money from their, their investments in, for instance, wind farms, 
and in biogas plants. And uh, that's what we also want to replicate uh, here in West Flanders, set up a green economy around uh, this goal that we have to reduce carbon emissions and raise the share of renewable energy. One of the key outcomes of the ERE project was this innovative computer interface based on maps generated by the Google Internet search engine. A team led by Bent Muller at the University of Aalborg in Denmark combined a database of energy needs and means of production for each of the transnational stakeholders with an easily understandable graphical model that allows users to zoom in on any geographical point in the region and extract information about projects planned or underway. By looking at the system you can find uh, projects, uh, partners, companies, knowledge institutions on the map in your own region and you can use that to to simply navigate, to get an overview of what's happening in the region, uh, to find uh, partners in a forthcoming project to identify places to visit if you want to visit a region where renewable energy uh, is developed, where sustainable energy development is taking place. And um, well, before you had these systems you would have to look at maps, you would look, have to look at reports, tables, etc. And we believe that this map interface is much easier to, to access. Another project partner, the West Jotlands region of Sweden, had already begun investing in alternative fuels for its fleet of vehicles, including buses and cars. Its main contribution to ERE was a major consultancy report, which is now being used as a blueprint by regional authorities around the North Sea, seeking to make the transition to renewable energy production, while at the same time stimulating local economic opportunities. The report warns such major changes are only possible if there is political support at all levels. The report also said a uh, thing that our, our politicians took very seriously. Uh, if you start, if you try to be in advance, you will also get opportunities to advance your economy. If you find solutions, they could be applied elsewhere. The ERE project ran for just three years, but is a good example of a modestly funded Interreg initiative that has helped focus innovation on a major EU policy goal through regional development.